Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss how to create or insert 3D text in Archicad. And if you are ready, let's, let's get started by creating a new project. So I'll go to File, a New, and create a new project. Just click on New. We'll have uh, Archicad start creating a new project for us. And when it's done, we can uh, go to View, View and activate the construction grid display so that we are going to be able to see these grids when we are working on uh, our project. In terms of the various ways of annotating our project, we have uh, the most basic two ways, two, two D ways is using text or uh, using labels. And these, these ones are documenting tools which we already have discussed in, uh, in other tutorials that I have in this channel. So you have the text tool and you also have the label tool. So away from that, you want to be able to create a three-dimensional text which is going to appear in our 3D model as an object. So in this case, that object is going to be found and uh, so design, take your tools, and then moving down here you have the object. So if you click on it, you will have and this one activated the, the default settings for the object. So let's click on uh, the settings dialog like that. And when that opens the object default settings, you have a search here that is waiting for a search entry. And we can be able to search for 3D text. And uh, you have this text 3D 25. So, and this is clicked on. You can, uh, try to do away with that. So this is the text 3D25 uh, preview and positioning. And before I do anything, I just want to click on OK and place this on floor plan. Then from there, I'll activate the 3D view. Then you'll be able to see this text as it appears in the 3D, the 3D window. So let's say you wanted to make more customizations to this. So you can either do this on the floor plan or in the 3D window by holding the shift key on your keyboard down and then clicking on it to select it like that. That uh, text is now selected. And then we go back to uh, to this settings dialog again. And uh, that settings dialog is going to open object selection uh, settings. So these are the default settings that we have. And I want us to start discussing one by one. We start with preview and positioning, and this controls uh, the size size of um, of the object and uh, how it is positioned in relation to home story or rather to the various uh, building levels that we have and projection to uh, zero. So that's it. Uh, we go to 3D uh, text 3D settings, and the very first one here is under style representation and surfaces. And the first one is the text, which here we can be able to just select it and type what we want to appear as, as the text. The second one here is going to allow us to customize the font. So clicking on this uh, arrow here is going to give us the various font types. So I want to choose this one. Click on it. It's going to get ref reflected here. So what is our font uh, style? Eh? We have options for having the normal, bold, or italic. Let's say I want to have bold in place. We have uh, options for customizing the width, for customizing uh, the angles in terms of rotation around the Y, uh, the X, the Y, and the Z axis. Away from that, we have 2D representation, which is uh, the appearance of this uh, object in the 2D window. So let's say we want to have this checked so that is going to be appearing in, in, in 2D. And if you look at this, we have the fields, the contour pen, the field type, and the field uh, pen customizations here. We can choose according to our preferences. And then away from 2D representation, we have also selection settings, settings for, for 3D representation, which here is allowing us to ca customize the 3D detail view by choosing from these three options that we have here. We have also the resolution and the shadow. So here we can choose to enable or disable shadows in a, 
3D. What shadows means is that uh, if this object is, is exposed to light, it is going to be able to cast shadows. So that's what we, if we take here, that is what we've uh, enabled. And we also have uh, surfaces. Surfaces is going to uh, customize, or rather is going to be, to allow us to choose the type of uh, surface finish that we want to have. For example, here, yeah, this is a text, and in terms of surface, is having a wood pine grained finish. Let's say this uh, text is going to, let's say we click on this, we'll have, we'll have all these uh, building materials to choose from. And for me, I'm looking for, I don't know, let's say we had, uh, what type of a material for this? We could be having uh, just waste glass. Uh, let's just have a paint royal blue as, as, as the surface finish so that's it for uh, the style uh, representation and surfaces if you click on this we'll have uh, some description here and this description is going to allow us to put some uh, non-graphical uh, data which is very important if you are modeling your project using the beam methodology so we'll be able to Put in the cost of that, who is uh, the manufacturer of this product, what is the location in our project, the accessories that we need, the inventory number, the serial number, production year, you have the weight, and any other um, information or data that we want to define here. Yeah, so we have been given options for defining some other parameters that we can incorporate under the description. So those are the, the text 3D settings. So we have settings for how this, uh, this 3D text is going to be displayed on the floor plan and the section. So in terms of floor plan display, here we have options for customizing uh, whether I want to show this uh, object in uh, which story or level of the building. We also have simple, allows us to customize object line types and object pens, and we have cut surfaces which allows us to customize the objects attributes and the fill, line pen, foreground pen and background pen of this object. That is how it appears if it is cut and viewed from a sectional viewpoint. So that is floor plan and section. And a model, we have options for overriding surfaces that we had chosen up here. So if you want to override, you just click on this and we have options for choosing another material that is going to be uh, the default. So I'll put this off like that. Below that, we have classifications, classification in properties. Again, this is important for uh, if you're modeling uh, using the BIM methodology. Uh, we need to have information such as the ID and uh, the categories, which is here. ID, you can give it a custom ID. You have a structural function. So this object, in terms of uh, structural functions, is we either is a load bearing element, is a non load bearing element, or we have not defined that. So for me, I know this text is a non load bearing element and uh, it is placed to the exterior of the building. So this is the position. So uh, we have renovation here. Renovation comes in place, let's say, in, in, a, in a project. Let's say we are modeling a project that is existing, which are the demolition and alteration works, which means you are going to demolish some parts. We are going to build some other other uh, new works. So in terms of renovation, if you click on this, we'll have three options. You have this whether this is existing, is to be demolished, or it's a new work that is going to be constructed. For me, that's new work. Product information is going to allow us to put in to, to input the model, the serial number, the barcode, acquisition date and purchase price of that object. We are also able to input data about the, the manufacturer of this product, what is the production date, the country of origin, the product's website, point of conduct, warranty, and the end date. A beam also allows us to do energy analysis, environmental impact assessment, and all those. So under environmental, we have uh, this type of data that we can also put, specify for a model, product description, and uh, structural analysis data and we have IFC properties. IFC is a industry foundation classes, and this is the file format that is currently being used to store BIM data 
and uh, is a file that can be shared or rather can be read by various uh, software uh, that support the, 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 the BIM uh, methodology. So with that, you know, we've discussed a lot of information that in terms of, um, of graphics, they are not going to be reflected in what we've done. But let's just click on OK and see what happens with our text. So this is the text that we've created. So click on the outside and then right click and then we want to do what let's say we change the 3d style to simple shading with shadows and then rotate that's uh, our text so away from that we could uh, maybe want to position this text uh, to some wall in the building so let's say we, we go back to the 2d and we try to go to design Design architectural tools, activate the wall tool, then draw a wall from here to here, select it, go to the settings dialog for that wall, and uh, under geometry and positioning, so here we have the top link as not linked, then we'll have the height of this wall as 6 meters, click on OK, that is going to update, you can be able to view that in a 3D window, so that is how it appears. Eh? So the text is that at the bottom. I want to put it up there. So just the same way you can be able to adjust a 3D, other, other 3D elements, you can be able to select this text. Right click and move, choose drag, drag it up like that. So that's how it appears. Uh, let's get back to 2D and try to create a section here. Want to see how this text appears in the section sectional view so like that select right click open with current view settings this is it so i want to move it to the outside up to that point then maybe move it up by a few millimeters like this so let's get back to, to 3d window and see how that appears so if you look at it we have our text now attached to this wall at the top as we had chosen in our settings, we have some we have uh, some shadows that are appearing there. So I think up to that point, uh, we've discussed a lot. I think up to this point, we've discussed uh, some important information. And I hope this tutorial has, has, has been of use to you. So if it has been helpful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And most importantly... Uh, activate the bell icon so that when we post a new tutorial you'll be one of the you you'll be one of the very first people that will be notified so all the best until next time keep learning and cheers